Hello, my name is Zach Dalhoff. I'm a current anesthesiology resident at the University of Iowa Hospitals and Clinics, and today I would like to talk with you about the Nose to Toes preoperative prepping system. My goal for this discussion is to cover some background information for you. We'll discuss some of the evidence supporting these new measures, as well as go over how these measures will be implemented in the operating room. First of all, as you know, keeping patients safe starts long before they ever get to the operating room. This is true for preventing the transmission of bacteria that are important in causing surgical site infections, as well as for preventing the spread of viruses, which is of particular importance today, given the ongoing coronavirus pandemic. The methods that we will discuss not only prevent surgical site infections, they have also been recommended by the World Health Organization to help prevent spread of viruses during pandemics. They have been shown to be 99% effective at killing viruses in under 15 seconds. In fact, they have also been shown to be significantly more effective than conventional soap and water techniques, as well as alcohol-based techniques. The Nose to Toes preoperative prepping system is a comprehensive approach that will address the major risk factors that are associated with surgical site infections. It focuses on decontamination of the three main bacteria reservoirs that have been implicated in causing surgical site infections, those being the skin, nasal cavity, and oral cavity. In addition, these measures have antiviral activity and decrease viral transmission. The ultimate goal is to decrease patient bacteria and viral burden before they ever enter the operating room. By doing so, we will decrease transmission throughout the perioperative period and ultimately decrease surgical site infections. This in turn will decrease patient morbidity and mortality and decrease overall hospital costs. When patients arrive to the hospital on the day of surgery, they bring with them a whole host of bacteria and viruses that can then be transmitted throughout the perioperative period. Once again, this is of particular importance today with the ongoing coronavirus pandemic and efforts focused on decreasing virus transmission. According to the CDC, the number one source of surgical site infections comes from the patient's own bacterial flora. The most common implicated organism is Staphylococcus aureus, and the most significant bacteria reservoir is the patient's own skin. However, both the nasal and oral cavities are important reservoirs as well. When it comes to surgical site infections, there are a few important things worth noting. First of all, surgical site infections are common. They occur following 7% of all elective surgeries, adding up to a total of 160,000 to 300,000 healthcare-associated infections per year. Second of all, surgical site infections are costly. In fact, they are the number one most costly of all healthcare-associated infections. They increase hospital length of stay, the risk for ICU admission, as well as the risk for hospital readmission following patient discharge. The average cost is approximately $25,000 per surgical site infection. This adds up to a total cost of more than $3 billion per year. In addition, certain surgical site infections are not reimbursed by CMS, thereby causing hospitals to absorb this additional cost. According to a recently published randomized controlled clinical trial, surgical site infection rates can be decreased by greater than 80% when a comprehensive multifaceted approach is used, specifically one that focuses on patient decontamination and decreasing bacterial transmission throughout the perioperative period. Improved hand hygiene, vascular access care, and environmental cleaning are all critical aspects of this process as well. Ultimately, Decreasing the rate of perioperative transmission is associated with significant reductions in surgical site infections. The decontamination agents used in the nose to toes preoperative prepping system include chlorhexidine gluconate skin wipes, chlorhexidine gluconate mouthwash, and povidone iodine nasal swabs. These agents provide antimicrobial activity for up to 12 hours after time of application. In addition, both chlorhexidine gluconate and povidone iodine have significant activity against COVID-19, MERS coronavirus, MVA, influenza, 
and hepatitis A, among others. Therefore, they are an integral part of decreasing viral transmission during the current coronavirus pandemic, as well as any potential future virus outbreaks. The measures outlined above are safe and effective, and most importantly, possess a low side effect profile. Implementation of the nose-to-toes preoperative prepping system will require a team-oriented approach to ensure appropriate patient decontamination. Patients will undergo a multifaceted decontamination process that will take place in the preoperative day of surgery area, also known as DOSA. DOSA nursing will be responsible for assisting patients with the following. Chlorhexidine gluconate skin wipes, chlorhexidine gluconate mouthwash, and the first application of povidone iodine nasal swabs. Anesthesia personnel will be responsible for the following, performing the second application of povidone iodine nasal swabs immediately before transporting the patient to the operating room. In addition, improved hand hygiene, vascular access care, and environmental cleaning will be implemented in the operating room. So what will the steps entail? First thing you're gonna do, is obtain your nose to toes preoperative prepping kit. Inside the kit, you should find a total of three things. One is going to be your chlorhexidine gluconate skin wipes. The second will be chlorhexidine mouthwash. You will see a toothbrush as well, however, that can be discarded. And third will be a package that contains the nasal povidone iodine solution. Once you have your kit, you're ready to go. Before you proceed with the skin decontamination process, it's important to make sure your patient is not wearing any lotion, deodorants, or other skin products. It's also important to confirm that your patient did not shave prior to coming to the hospital. Next, I'll have you go ahead and instruct your patient to remove any jewelry, ear piercings, necklaces, anything of that nature, okay? Once they've done that, you're ready to move on to the skin decontamination. The first step will be to obtain your chlorhexidine gluconate skin wipes. I'll have you go ahead and hand those to your patient, and we'll walk through the skin decontamination. Each kit comes with a total of six wipes. There will be two per packet. The first wipe will be used to decontaminate the neck, the chest, and the shoulders. The second wipe will then be used to wash off both arms as well as the hands, and lastly, the axilla. After they've done that, the third wipe will then be used to wash off the groin, the perineum, and the abdomen. The fourth wipe will then be used to decontaminate the right leg and right foot. And the fifth wipe will be used for the left leg and left foot. The last wipe will then be used on the buttocks and back. Once your patient has finished these steps, you can discard those wipes. The next step will be proceeding with the chlorhexidine gluconate mouthwash. I'll have you hand your patient a cup and then you'll hand them the chlorhexidine gluconate mouthwash as well. You'll instruct them to open it and go ahead and swish and spit after swishing for a total of 30 seconds. Once the patient is finished with the chlorhexidine mouthwash, you're ready to move on to the last step. I'll have you obtain your nasal povidone iodine solution and hand that to your patient. You'll also hand them the package that contains the nasal swabs. Each package should contain a total of four swabs. You'll use two of them now, and you'll set two aside later for the anesthesia team. Once the patient removes the swab, you'll walk them through coating the swab with the nasal povidone iodine. During this process, it's important to make sure the entire swab is coated appropriately and insert the swab into the nair as far back as comfortable and possible for the patient. Once it's in the nair, you'll ask them to rotate for a total of 10 times. Next, they can slowly start to withdraw the swab. As they're coming out, it's important to make sure they coat the entire nasal cavity. And once they get to the tip of the nair, go ahead and rotate an additional 10 times, making sure to get all edges of the nair. Once they finish this, they can discard that swab and move on with the same steps on the opposite side. Once both sides have been completed, you will have then finished your component of the nose-to-toes preoperative decontamination process. The anesthesia team will be by in a little while, 
and prior to going back to the operating room, they will use the final two nasal swabs. In the event of an emergency, the process will be similar. However, there are a few subtle changes. The nose to toes preoperative prep kits can be obtained from the red anesthesia carts in the operating room or by calling the anesthesia workroom. Kits will be stocked in each of these locations. OR nursing will decontaminate the patient's body using the chlorhexidine wipes prior to performing the surgical prep. After securing the airway, anesthesia personnel will place the chlorhexidine mouthwash into the patient's mouth and let sit for 30 seconds. They will then suction the mouth to remove the mouthwash. Lastly, anesthesia personnel will apply povidone iodine to each nair bilaterally using the nasal swabs. Please note, both the chlorhexidine gluconate mouthwash and povidone iodine nasal swabs can be done by the patient themselves prior to induction if it is deemed appropriate and time allows.